It's also going to allow you to understand timeline, right? So if I get behind over here and I know that I wanted to be finish the specific warm up at 29 minutes and all of a sudden it's 35 because I had some other stuff going on, that tells me a couple things. I need to either clean up my group management or I'm not teaching the movement effectively enough. Maybe I'm talking too much. Maybe I'm you know, letting people just kind of screw around and not keeping control of what's going on. But the timeline will allow you to gauge yourself and give yourself an evaluation on your effectiveness as a coach. So when you do this, when you take this and you put this into practice, it allows you to do a self-evaluation instead of having somebody else come in and give you the evaluation. Just a really valuable tool. Alright guys, welcome back to Jerk Block Talk. I'm Jason Fernandez. We are here at CrossFit Rife. If you haven't seen our other video about just general setup for a session plan, go watch that first. There's some basic pieces in there that we need to have before we get into the meat of what we're going to talk about today, which is a detailed session plan. So before we get into the de detailed session plan, let's talk about the workout. The workout, it's a 12 minute AMRAP. One muscle up, five air squats is the RX plus version in our gym. And then every round you're gonna add one muscle up and then five air squats. So the volume increases as you go through. If you have attended, it is October of 2017. If you've attended the level one, probably August up until this point, 17, you may have noticed there's been a change in the programming lecture. And we put a lot more emphasis in that programming lecture on Basically, what are effective themes for effective workouts, and then how to run an effective class or put together an effective lesson plan for your class. And here is the big takeaway. When you're putting together a lesson plan, which you should be doing, this should be done beforehand, you should put some thought and effort into it, the objective with your lesson plan is to maximize effectiveness, not the amount of shit that you can pack in one hour. Now. For this workout, we're going to go through a pretty, uh, this isn't the full detailed template. If you were to read our write-up, it's much more detailed than this in writing, but this is going to give you a snapshot of what a lesson plan would look like on a 60 minute timeline. Most classes are 60 minutes and here's what you'll learn as you start to write these lesson plans and you plot this stuff out on a 60 second timeline or 60 minute timeline is that in order to do coaching, which is your job, is to improve movement and teach people things. The more things you put in there, the less effective you will be as a coach. And that you, what you'll find is it gets harder and harder to jam uh, an A through C of stuff to do while effectively coaching and teaching people movement. So for this workout, I'm gonna walk you through 60, uh, 60 minute timeline of how we would do this. Uh, this piece at the front end, I think this is super imperative, that wad brief, this is where you really, really get to lay the intent on people, talk people in and out of bad decisions, and kind of just tell them what's going on today. We have another video on how to give an effective wad brief, so go ahead and watch that. But anywhere between zero to three minutes. Sometimes ours go as long as like five minutes, just we're bullshitting with people, asking questions, letting people cut up, let them get that out of their system before we get into business of what it is that we're gonna do today. So give a wad brief, learn how to do that, learn how to give it effectively so that you can help people craft their plan for the workout. From there, we're gonna do a general warm up. A general warm up, guys, is probably 400 meter run. We're gonna do some burpees or some line drills. This is just stuff to get the blood flowing, get the joints moving, get their heart rate up a little bit, maybe have them sweating depending on what time of year it is. We need to get them moving first before we get into anything specific, anything technical before we ever grab a barbell or anything like that. So we've allotted six minutes for a general warm-up. That's plenty of time for a 400 meter run and then four minutes of line drills. You just gotta keep people moving on this. From there, I've allotted 20 minutes here because the muscle up is a technical movement for the specific portion of the warm up. We're not gonna spend a ton of time going over the air squat. We'll review the mechanics of it. We'll put everybody in a circle. We'll probably do like the 27 squat series or something like that just to keep people moving, clean up the air squats, talk about hip extension, depth at the bottom, chest up, knees out, all those basics that we wanna see in the air squat. The majority of this 20 minutes is going to be spent covering the muscle up. And if you don't think you need that much time, 
what I'm gonna tell you is you're just not effectively teaching the muscle up. We wanna teach transitions. We wanna talk about different scaling options. We wanna talk about should people be in the low ring? Should they be in the high ring? Should they be doing jumping muscle ups? We, we wanna get the shoulders warmed up, prepared to do a highly technical gymnastics movement as far as CrossFit's concerned. So this is where we get to teach some of those mechanics. Remember, this, the muscle up is not a strength movement. There are some prerequisites of strength, but most, for the most part, if somebody has chest of bar pull ups and ring dips, they have the requisite strength to do a muscle up. This right here is where we get to talk about the technique of the warm up. Can they have a false grip? Do they even need a false grip? Where are the hands going in the pull? We can start people down here on the low rings and then we can transition all of our folks up into the high rings and make sure we iron out all of those wrinkles in that movement because this is one where you're gonna see some people that have a wide array of skill sets. So we need to get those things ironed out before we say three, two, one, go. So we get to go over the technique here, but this is also where you get to watch people move and it gives you time in here to craft what an appropriate scaling option would be, for instance, for somebody who has muscle ups, but is not gonna end up having, they're gonna go to failure here once they get to the fifth round or whatever that is, and if they have that, that's gonna happen pretty quickly. So this would be something where you can institute a fixed number instead of an ascending rep scheme in the muscle up if you wanted to go that route. From there, you're gonna give yourself a break. This is where you get to have those one-off conversations. Coach, I don't know what to do. I don't know what's going on. How, how should I do this? Uh, should I scale or should I not scale? Give people that pee break, all of that stuff here. You got three minutes built in for that. You might need a little bit more, but again, on this timeline, you've got some wiggle room. From there, we're gonna execute the workout. It's 12 minutes long. We're gonna finish at 44. We usually send our athletes on a walk outside, do something to cool down, chat about it. We have another video on that too, so go ahead and watch that. We gave uh, seven minutes for that cool down. That's seven minutes for people to walk around, put up any equipment they need to, wipe stuff down. This is probably gonna be a little faster than that because for this workout, we really won't have any equipment to put up, but I want people to be able to take their time. It's a 12 minute workout, so we're gonna utilize that. At the end, this is where we're gonna do our debrief. This is where we're gonna work on a little mobility. We're gonna talk about how the workout went, and this is where you really get to build some of that community. So I want you to notice something on both ends, of the lesson plan that we've crafted here is something that's very, very important that I think a lot of people skip. This is where you educate your member base. Here on the brief, here in the debrief at the end. If you're not taking the time to educate people and you get to do it twice when you start building this lesson plan, they're not gonna buy into the program. They're not, they're not gonna understand what it is that, that you're doing. They're gonna be more inclined to wanna go and do another program instead of what you're doing because you've failed to explain to them what it is that's going on in the class and the why. People want to know why, so you can lay that on them systematically every single day when they come in. So here's what I recommend. Start doing a session plan. You can buy session plans from other people if you wanna outsource this stuff. But if you're gonna be a coach, if you wanna be a professional, you need to start practicing this stuff because what you're gonna find is the more stuff that you start trying to put in, into your lesson plan, the less effective you are going to be on the floor when you go in and you stand in front of the athletes. It's also gonna allow you to understand timeline, right? So if I get behind over here and I know that I wanted to be finish the specific warm up at 29 minutes and all of a sudden it's 35 because I had some other stuff going on, that tells me a couple things. I need to either clean up my group management or I'm not teaching the movement effectively enough. Maybe I'm talking too much. Maybe I'm you know, letting people just kind of screw around and not keeping control of what's going on. But the timeline will allow you to gauge yourself and give yourself an evaluation on your effectiveness as a coach. So when you do this, when you take this and you put this into practice, it allows you to do a self-evaluation instead of having somebody else come in and give you the evaluation. Just a really valuable tool. Some things or some resources I think you guys should take a look at. CrossFit.com, obviously, if you're not following CrossFit training on Instagram, you should. They do a lot of stuff with regard to scaling and lesson plans. DT lesson plans on Instagram is another phenomenal one. Denise Thomas, she's a Flowmaster HQ, one of my mentors. She puts a ton of free lesson plans on that Instagram page. So you can go through and start looking at, okay, this is how somebody who's really, really experienced, really knows their shit, is putting together a lesson plan. Let me try to mimic that. 
before you maybe potentially start trying to do this on your own. So there's a lot of resources out there, guys. Look at that stuff and then try to go through this practice of putting together a lesson plan. So I hope this helps, but you need to start putting together a detailed lesson plan every day for your class. It's professional. It will help you become a better coach. Try it out. You're going to mess it up quite a bit before you get a good one. So uh, be patient with yourself. All right, guys, if you like this content, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.